with me. I guess I never really told you why I'm so interested in that kind of stuff. I'm actually a forensic science major, and all of these things like murder fascinate me. The title of my story is Veronica. Um, okay. um, well, I'm sorry. This is just kind of strange. I never expected to be asked to dinner by my boss's daughter. But yes, of course, Ms. Lopez. Let's go then, James. I know a good restaurant just down the street. They walked to Ms. Lopez's car and drove down the street to the restaurant. They took a seat and placed their orders. For a few minutes, they just sat there, looking at each other. So my title is Andy Rourke Gets a Girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Today I decided to go to the beach. It was a nice Saturday afternoon. I decided to kick it with my good friend James Kennedy. At the beach, there is nothing more relaxing than digging your feet in the sand while looking at the waves topple among each other. Days like these are the best. Well, when you're not me, Andy Rourke. So, the title of my story is called, uh, Being Stuck. Sometimes Audrey would get lost in her own world when she was putting away books. She'd often find books that were incredibly interesting, and instead of putting them away, she'd read through them. I usually have to make some loud, distracting noise behind the counter to get her to focus again and help her avoid getting caught by our boss, Mr. Cal. I feel like Mr. Cal's first name is Calvin, but I don't really know. My story is called Slavery in the Deep South, the story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> A bit shaken, I began the long walk back to the tobacco fields ready for work, only to be confronted by my overseer, Mr. Jack Jackson, sir. With his eyes buzzing from drinking and gambling last night, and pockets empty from the same, he wasn't a pretty sight. In fact, he hadn't even bothered to button up his shirt. His hairy, pale chest stuck out like the cap of a mushroom. Even the dank, decaying hay had more color than he did. Okay, so the title of my story is Above the Horizon. Once McGregor parked our spacecraft, he came out of the cockpit. Wellestone, Livingston, Yalto, Annie, and Michael were all talking amongst themselves. They were getting to know each other more personally, as the amount they had before to mingle was inadequate. I decided to make my way towards McGregor and thank him for getting us up into space safety when I saw Yalto, the person who was in charge of keep, keeping track of the supplies available, made, made his way over there. I hesitated because I didn't want to be a third wheel, but nevertheless, I went on. So my story is called, I mean, my short story is called Endless Struggles. An hour after the Queen's announcement was made, the village of Retro State received notice of the declaration of war, and Shadow quickly took notice. The town went into a panic, and the villagers began rushing from store to store, getting any supplies they could get their hands on. Most of the supplies had been smuggled from people, from people who had been perched, and knew they were going to be perched. Um, my story, well, my title is A Mission to Pursue. It was barely 8 in the morning. Ashton woke up and knew something wasn't right. He smelled smoke. How unusual. He checked outside his windows and to his surprise, his entire mansion was burning. Richard, followed by a few of his workers, burst into Ashton's room to warn him. Mr. Archer, oh good, you're up. The politicians lit your house just moments ago. We must leave now, Richard shouted. Um, my story is called 1114. Okay. Don't freak out, Rosalia. I'm just here to talk and find out some answers, I think. Well, that's not doing here. Let's go to my apartment across the street, she replied. I guess the time we gave her was enough to recover from the surprise a couple of days, of days ago. We walk across the street and are welcomed into her small studio apartment. It looks as though it hasn't been cleaned in weeks. The brick walls contain a weird green-looking substance. Aluminum trash cans held a cardboard box upright, which sheltered a blanketed huddled figure below. Wrappers of candies and small bottles of water littered the area. Only five items were of some relative value. A wallet, a jade ring, cigarette pack, Nike shoes, and a cell phone, clenched in a bloody fist. Damp footfalls, damp footfalls neared the home. A shiny golden badge hung up black cotton that was threadbare due to freaking washing. Okay. Um, the name of my story is uh, Albert's Arrival. <coughs> it's like a hole, except it gets bigger no matter what you do to it. Not a black hole, no. This one is darker. It will consume you and suck up your last bit of hope you have left in you. 
laughing while it eats you slowly. And don't worry about running away from it. You won't. Beg and plead, it will be too late. It's not your fault, of course. It's a fate that they have chosen for themselves. Um, my, the title of my story is From Darkness to Light. It was ten minutes till midnight, and Lance had arrived at the entrance of the forest. He saw Glenda, Olivia, and Jesus, and quickly ran to them as fast as he could. I thought you weren't going to show Lance. Glenda said, staring at him and almost mocking him. Shut up, Glenda. I'm here, ain't I? So, so far you're wrong. There's nothing here but trees. Lance said, rolling his eyes. 